Speaker of the House is a collaborator to overthrow the last election. Absolutely. What happens if Mike Johnson is the Speaker on the 6th of January, 2025? He can't be. You know, we're facing a situation with respect to the 2024 election uh, where it, it's an existential crisis. Welcome back to America Decides. That was former Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney discussing current House Speaker Mike Johnson and former President Donald Trump. She spoke with CBS's John Dickerson for a terrific sit-down interview on CBS Sunday morning where they discussed how Cheney's former Republican colleagues reacted following January 6. CBS News senior political analyst John Dickerson joins us now. He's also the host of Primetime with John Dickerson. John, you ventured back to your alma mater, the University of Virginia, for this conversation with the former congresswoman. Uh, take us into that conversation, not just in terms of the politics of it, but the stakes she laid out for American democracy. It's good to be with you, Bob. The stakes couldn't be higher as far as Liz Cheney is concerned. And this is not about the past, but the future. And she said, essentially, if Donald Trump is reelected, that will mean the end of the republic. She also said if he if there is an election and Republicans are in control in 2025, that that might also mean the end of the republic, because she believes that if uh, Speaker Johnson is uh, still speaker or if there's another Republican in the speaker's chair, uh, that they will essentially do what Donald Trump wants them to do. And given that Donald Trump said that the election was stolen in 2012, 2016, 2020, he's likely to say it again, uh, even if he was uh, the victor. And so she thinks that that is also a threat to the republic. Um, and I think she feels that the tide is not with uh, her and the forces of democracy and that the, the moment is uh, perilous. And as she said, that America at the moment uh, is sleep, sleepwalking into a dictatorship. John, do you believe she's setting up for a possible independent presidential bid in 2024? I don't know if it's in 2024. I asked her and she said what you would expect, which is uh, she's so focused on this question that she doesn't want to talk about anything else, which is exactly the thing you would want to say uh, to put yourself in the proper political position, which is to stay focused on this issue, which she says is so important, but then also not really have to entertain any political questions. It's very clear um, that she has larger uh, ambitions, but whether they are of 2024, uh, or, or the future, uh, I wasn't able to, uh, to figure out. What's your assessment of her view of the current Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, and will any House Republicans listen to her criticism? Her, her assessment of the Speaker could not be any lower. And she goes into great detail in this book about Mike Johnson, which when she wrote the book, and you know, Bob, about publishing deadlines, he was just a relatively obscure Louisiana congressman. He was not Speaker of the House, and she thought, in fact, that she'd kind of gone on a little too long about him. But the picture she wanted to paint was quite important because she felt that the sleight of hand he engaged in is the enabling sleight of hand that makes collaborators, and as she said, Donald Trump can't do it alone. So what she detailed was a case in which Mike Johnson was essentially asserting that Congress had powers it didn't have, asserting uh, things about the election that were not true, and asserting things about the election that had been found to have no merit in a number of different court cases. And that in doing so, he was tricking his colleagues and basically saying all he was doing in filing an amicus brief um, uh, in these court cases was um, backing up the president, uh, President Trump at the time, backing up his ability to question the results. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, but Liz Cheney says he was doing a good deal more and being dishonest about it. And she basically uses that as an example case for what happens when Republicans become collaborators of a president who is lying about an election. Collaborators, that's a word that has a loaded meaning, in a sense, in terms of history. And if you step back, not just from your, from your role as interviewer and as presidential historian John Dickerson, when you hear her talk about sleepwalking toward a dictatorship and you hear Cheney and others worry about the rise of authoritarianism in the United States, possible fascist uh, influence in the U.S. Uh, government from the Republican Party, and then you hear from Republican critics of the former congresswoman who say she's way over her, her skis in terms of using that sort of language and rhetoric. But what are we to make of this all, this kind of battle over what the future is or could be inside the United States, especially in the GOP? I think her argument is that if you look at what 
Donald Trump did in office, uh, and particularly in that period between when he lost the election and January 6th. If you look at all the things he did, which you've covered so fully and which were a part of the January 6th uh, committee, that it is impossible to come to any other conclusion than he thoroughly broke with his obligation to protect the Constitution. And so if you look at what he did do, and then what he has promised to do, including getting rid of the federal cases against him, uh, pardoning those who were participants in the January 6th attack on the Capitol, and a number of other things going after political opponents, that if you take what he has done and what he has promised to do, that America has never seen a threat like that from a party nominee, and that if you take an oath, you have an affirmative job, in her view, to stand up and say, this is a threat to the center of democracy. And if you don't do that, then you're essentially helping Donald Trump. That's her argument. Provocative interview. John Dickerson, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Bob.